Want to know how to be a voice actor from anywhere in the world? This is something I know a little bit about. Stay tuned. For more coaching videos on voice acting or communication and connection success in all areas, business and personal, be sure and hit the subscribe button and that little bell that lets you know when new videos are coming out. And for more free resources, check out spikespencer.com and my Mind Scrambler podcast. Hey guys, welcome to my video. Okay, I have been a voice actor for about 30 years now. And uh, I have done hundreds of roles in anime, video games, animation, on camera, etc. Uh, if you want to know a little bit more about uh, my work, you can always go to spikespencer.com slash voiceover. And it has all my resume, everything else you want, or just Google me. Okay? So I am in a very specific position to help you with this topic as I am recording right now from the Gold Coast of Australia. That's right. I'm in freaking Australia. I live in Burbank, but for the last year and a half, I have been in Australia because I was appearing at a convention uh, called Supernova in uh, Melbourne right before the pandemic started. So if you're watching this video, uh, I don't know when you're watching it, but it is now uh, August of 2021 and we're on lockdown. Crazy story. But I have traveled all over the world uh, for the last 15, 16 years or so, appearing at conventions as well. And so I love to travel. So I would stay at these places for extended periods, usually instead of going, you know, flying there uh, on a Thursday and back on a Monday, I would spend another week. If I'm going to London, I'd spend another uh, extra four or five days in Paris or Barcelona or something along that line. Um, and I have recorded uh, video games, commercials, uh, tons of auditions from everywhere. So I'm going to break that down today as to some of the things that I have done, what I've used, and how you can do it too. Okay, let's start with everybody's favorite voiceover toy, the microphone. That's right, everybody, the microphone. Let's hear it for the microphone. Okay, this game has changed a bit. Now, I am absolutely not a tech nerd. I know almost nothing about microphones. However, uh, I have what is called a Bluebird microphone. There's a picture right there. And uh, it was given to me by my friend Erin Fitzgerald. Thank you, darling. A uh, little shout out to Erin. Yay, love her. Uh, so that is the microphone that I've used for a very long time, and I love it. It works really well with my voice. Uh, microphones are a very personal thing. You need to find what microphone works best for your voice. Here's the trick, though. You can no longer use a USB microphone. No USB microphones. Apparently, now with the, the pandemic, everybody has upgraded everything, and they can hear uh, the, the different sounds uh, of your USB mic. Uh, so you can't use it anymore. Now, for many, many years, I traveled with this one right here. This is an Apogee, and uh, it's a great little microphone. I loved it. Uh, it's so easy because you can travel with it anywhere. I mean, you could take this thing and, and put it in your suitcase. It was so light and easy, just beautiful. Um, that's not the case anymore. You have to have something better. So find something, if you do want to travel, find something that you can travel with. Now, I'm here for an extended stay, so I brought my Bluebird microphone, and it's in that closet over there. Um, I'll post a picture of that in a little bit and show you once we get into the studio side of it. But the trick with the microphones now, you have to have what's called a cardioid mic, which means it's going to plug in to a, an interface. Um, and that is going to go from the microphone to the interface, and then the interface is going to go to your computer. Again, like I said, I'm not high tech, and this is a video for people that are not high tech. I am not a tech nerd, so I'm going to walk you through what I know, and I still am a voice actor. Look at that. Okay, now that you've chosen a mic, not a USB mic, but a cardioid mic, uh, we want to go to the interface. Now, interfaces are interesting because I used to, I'm, I'm literally, this is what I used to travel with right here. This is amazing. Can you look at that? I mean, this is crazy. This is all I had, high, medium, low, right there. It just, I would just click it over. Oh, I'm going to do some screaming. Oh, better go this way. Going to low. That was it. 
and it would connect uh, from, here's the, the cardioid three-prong thingy, and then the other part that would go into the computer. That's it. That's all I used for a very, very long time in my home studio, actually. Uh, so traveling with this was great. Um, but actually, I didn't, I take that back. I didn't even have to travel with this because I was using a USB mic, which you can't do that anymore. So you have to have an interface. Now, um, I have sprung for what is called an SSL2. There's a picture of it somewhere over here. And the SSL2 is amazing, apparently. <laughs> I don't know anything about these. Look, check this out. This, the SSL2 uh, has uh, solid state logic, clash leading mic preamps, legacy 4K analog enhancement, studio quality monitoring, and the incredible SSL. I don't know. I have no idea what any of that crap means. I just know it makes my voice sound good on the other end. That's all I want to know. So I got a tip for you, hot tip. Ask an engineer friend who works the sound booths at a local sound studio. Ask them what you need to get. They'll tell you. Uh, traveling with an SSL2 is kind of bulky, so it's 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 pretty big, honking deal. But I'm here, I'm living in Australia for at least another couple of years. So I went ahead and sprung for it. it there are other ones. There are smaller ones. You don't need 9, 10 different freaking knobs. I, w I don't know what to do with them anyway. And there's no reason to, to, that you need that. If you're one of those geeks... I've got a lot of my voiceover friends who are like, check it out, look at my soundboard. I just, I kind of gloss over. I'm like, I don't know what you're doing. What is that? I don't care. Do you sound good? Okay, cool. That's the key. Do you sound good? Does it work for you? So get yourself a nice interface that works with your microphone. And remember, does it fit in your luggage? Is it easy to carry? What's the packaging like, etc. But you have to have these two things. You have to have the really good mic and a really good interface. That is key. Okay, next stop, we have the recording software that you're going to use. I have used Audacity for as long as I can remember. I, I have used Audacity uh, 15, 16 years uh, since I came out to uh, Hollywood. Um, Audacity is great, and it is free. There's a couple of little uh, tricks that you have to know about Audacity. If you download it, there's a, a file. It's actually like a LAME file. <laughs> Lame. Um, but you have to do something with that, and it's sometimes not compatible with certain Mac upgrades, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You'll learn these things. But I, like I say, I'm not a techie, and I use Audacity. And I've learned how to record with it and how to do little tweaks like noise cancellation, etc., things of that nature. Uh, just stick with your level of whatever you want to do. Now, you can use, uh, I know there's people use GarageBand, uh, what is it, uh, uh, Adobe, uh, shoot, I, I don't even know what's out there, uh, Pro Tools, etc. Whatever you have, get to know it really well so that if anything goes wrong, you can fix it fast. If you're in the middle of a session now and something goes wrong, you need to know how to fix that stuff as fast as possible because if things mess up on your end, it's a problem. Plus, whenever you're recording, a lot of times the people will want you to have a backup. The studio that you're working with, uh, you'll be able to work with them but and they'll be recording on their end, but sometimes they want you to have a backup as well so you have that running in the background. The internet... God bless it. The internet is amazing and allows us to do what I'm talking about right now from anywhere in the world. And you have to do one thing when you're traveling. You have to make sure that you have reliable, powerful, fast internet wherever you go. So if you're traveling somewhere to stay in a hotel, they're usually going to have pretty good internet. But if you're staying at an Airbnb uh, or something along that lines, then you are going to need to really be sure. Ask about the internet. Make sure it is really good. Read all of the reviews and make sure that your internet does work. And another trick, you may want to uh, travel with a, um, a long... Uh, cable that plugs into the actual router uh, that hardwires the Ethernet. Yeah, I know. I'm not a techie, so I didn't really know, but I have it. I have a 30-foot um, big blue Ethernet that I can plug into the router, and I have a 
uh, cable. It's this kind of thing. You know this this plug that you talk that I'm talking about it goes back in the back of the router, and then this is the goes into the computer. Actually, now I have to have an adapter on this to go to my computer. Little things that you need to know because um, some of them will want you to hardwire. Your connections are better if you hardwire. Um, I just had a session the other day. They wanted me to hardwire. For some reason, it was not working. The Wi-Fi, luckily, where we are is really, really good. Uh, the place we were staying a couple of times back uh, was not that good. So we had a real hard time dealing with the Internet over there. So look that up before you go anywhere. Make sure you have really strong Internet. Or you may even be able to uh, sometimes work off your cell phone. Uh, if your cell phone works and you can use that as a hub, it may be powerful enough. It'll use a lot of juice, but, I mean, there are lots of ways of making it work. Just make sure, as long as you've got the internet, baby, you are golden. Okay, so now that I've shown you that you can voice act from anywhere in the world, let's do a little dreaming. Where would you like to go and why? Think about it. I have voice acted from all over the world. I'm from Italy, London, Barcelona, Puerto Rico, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and other places. And I have done that just like I'm showing you right now. So put it in the comments. Tell me where do you want to go and why do you want to go there? Let's talk it up. Okay, now that we've got all the techie stuff lined up, now comes a very, very important factor. Your studio. Okay, um, just to share with you, I'm going to show pictures up here of some different places that I've been and different uh, studios that I've <laughs> studios that I have put together in order to record. I have recorded in uh, on desks with chairs on top. I have recorded in closets surrounded by uh, other people's garments. I have been I've done the the illustrious bed studio where you take a couple of pillows and stack them up and you put your computer and your mic and everything and then you throw the blankets over your head etc uh, I have all kinds of crazy fun places that I have recorded and you know what as long as the sound is really good it works nobody is going to turn you down if you sound great because it looks like crap trust me Okay, so there's a few different uh, ways you can go about this. So if you are traveling and you are literally only there for a couple of days, then like I said, the bed. The bed works fine for auditions, just you can't move around too much. Um, you know, like I said, you'll, you, you whip the covers back, stack a couple of uh, pillows up there, and put your computer and everything there, and then you throw the whole blanket and everything over you and record. Can't move that much, and it gets hot fast. So... Uh, and put a pillow underneath on the floor so you put your knees on there because that's how you're going to be doing it, on your knees on the flip side of the bed. Um, that can get hard on your knees, especially for the older folks like myself. <sighs> a nice tip here is wherever you're traveling, whether it's a hotel or an Airbnb, etc., ask for extra pillows and extra blankets. That way you'll have extra padding however you need it. For example, uh, here in this apartment, we are renting an apartment in the Gold Coast, and it comes furnished. So we don't have to deal with a whole lot of things, but we did need to get extra pillows, blankets, um, and extra padding, which I'm going to go over in just a second. But when you ask for that, you'll have the extra things on hand, especially if you're only going to be there for a few days. Now, I'm here for longer, so I went ahead and put together an actual studio, and uh, here's a picture of it somewhere. And what I did, a trick that I've always used, is go to uh, Target, Kmart, whatever, uh, or you can order it online from wherever you are, the bed topper. The, the, it's like the, not a bubble topper, but you know what I'm talking about. It's the foam that has the little curvy grooves in it, uh, like you have seen in the picture. You order a king-size bed topper, cut it up, stick it on the wall. You can use uh, temporary hooks, by the way, another tip. Anytime you're traveling, use the temporary 3M hooks that you can put on the wall anywhere, and then you pull them off slowly, and they pop off and don't mess up the paint. I travel with those everywhere I go. Uh, those things are amazing. Uh, and you can, uh, you can put foam up or pillows up with one of those hooks, and you have your padding there. So I hope this helps uh, as far as putting together a studio 
you can do it. You can do it anywhere. Just make sure your sound is good. Got me? Okay, now finally, sometimes wherever you are, things don't work out with your local setup, with what you have, and you're going to have to go professional, and you're going to have to go to a studio. Um, so look up online. God bless the internet again. Yay! Uh, look up local studios. Um, <clears throat> this could be difficult. Um, it was very difficult for me to find some places here in town, um, and it only came through other connections with other people that I had. So I'm going to talk a little bit, I'm going to do a whole other video about building those relationships that will help you uh, further your voiceover career. But when you're traveling, check on local studios, local acting classes, local voice actors, look around and find somebody. Ask all your friends who may be in the area if they know anybody that has a home setup that is really nice because you may lose a job. And I have lost jobs because uh, I was not prepared during the pandemic. Uh, I did have this mic for quite a while there. And uh, I'm doing this on a Yeti Nano, which is a nice podcasting mic, but it is not a professional mic. So be prepared uh, that if you do have to get a studio find one fast and negotiate on the rates because, uh, yeah, a lot of times if you try to do a gig that is paying you $75 an hour and the studio is costing you $150 an hour, is it worth it? Probably not. I'm just going to throw that out there. So uh, be aware of that, and that will lead us into building those relationships down the road. Okay, guys, that brings us to the end of how to be a voice actor from anywhere in the world. I hope I gave you some uh, good tips, tricks, tools, techniques that will help you to have a good time when you're traveling and still be up for the right roles. And remember, even if you don't have whatever it is you think you need, you still need to audition. If all you have is a phone, audition. If all you have is this microphone, audition. You got to audition, 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 whatever it is, and you get the role depending on whatever you're using. That doesn't mean that's the end result. You can do better. If you're gonna get, if you're gonna land a ten thousand dollar commercial, go out and buy a five hundred dollar microphone. Know what I'm saying? Scale. All right. Thanks so much. I hope you enjoyed this. I have more videos coming up uh, that we're gonna help us on relationships and acting and all sorts of fun stuff. So keep watching. As always, if you need more help and you wanted to go deeper with any of this stuff, I am available for coaching. Check out my website, spikespencer.com slash voice dash coaching. You can listen to my Mind Scrambler podcast where I give you tips, tricks, tools, and techniques that will help you succeed in all areas of life, including voice acting. And be sure, and again, subscribe and hit that bell so that you know when these videos are coming up. I look forward to talking to you and check out all the links that are below this video right here and you can connect with me there as well. I'm about to tell you, wow, that was a loud pop. Shit. And of course, next time with the, I say word thing good for living. Check out my podcast at Mind Scrambler. Son of a M-I-C-R-O-P. H O N E Microphone, microphone. All right. Is that bright enough? God. God. Go in and get that word out of there. How to voice act from anywhere in the world. Too much?